Oh, we've done it. We've just cleared out the giant camp using only a bunch of crappy level 10 bandits or something. Oh, and in return, we've picked up two giants and three mammoths to fight for us. Oh, this is just perfect. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Skyrim. Special edition, I know that's right. This is the re-release of the game with new enhanced graphics running on new modern systems. But best of all, it isn't even the latest Skyrim release. No, no, you guys can all get yourselves excited for Skyrim coming to the brand new PlayStation. Just how dated can this game get? Now, Skyrim is incredible, and having many, many, many years of development on it, you'd naturally imagine that because because of that, it's got that classic polish which most other games have. But no, this is a Bethesda Game Studios game, and I'm sure all of you know what that means. That means that there's a loving charm, and that that famous book labelled Balance, which most studios have in that dusty old corner, was long since thrown out the window. This game is broken. It's a game of cheese. It's a game where the cheese itself has additional layers of cheese for players to compete to achieve the title of absolutely most broken overpowered thing that this game actually allows you to do. And then when you get bored of that, you can strap 400,000 mods to it and then just ride it out into the sunset of oblivion. This game is incredible. I love it. It's a timeless classic, but most importantly, it probably holds the mantle for most exploitable game of all time. And today, it's going to be absolutely no different as we dive into a brand new adventure with a new character to show off the most overpowered level one build your character can be. We are talking about taking over the entirety of Skyrim, having the ability to kill just about everything, and doing it all from the comfort of level 1. No complicated setup, no fortified restoration loops, just a simple few clicks of a button and you've already finished the game. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea, and if you're feeling truly nostalgic, you might even give this video a like. Now without further ado, let's jump into a brand new game of The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Oh, here it begins. The iconic intro. I'm so excited. Todd Howard is like a whole brand new world that I've never experienced before, excluding the last 700 or so times I've experienced this very world. But trust me, it never gets old. Oh yes, the man who dies. The man who doesn't die, well, yet at least. And then Mr. Shoutman. Anyway, I'm just going to AFK through this entire intro scene until we get to that lovely, lovely character creator because we have to create the most powerful wizard we have ever ever seen in Skyrim. Someone who has the power to raise more dead than ever previously calculated. Well here we have it ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Skyrim character creator. So naturally we need to create a powerful and amazing necromancer. Naturally when it comes to creating a powerful necromancer you need a necromancer whose nose is very powerful and definitely someone with a very powerful bone structure. You see when your job primarily revolves around resurrecting skeletons all day, you naturally need to be powerful when it comes to bones. Oh my goodness, look at this sweet specimen we've made. So we've created our character. I mean, just look at him. He's uh, he's beautiful to say the least. And as you can see, he has true control over all of his facial bones, meaning he must be a good necromancer. And for that reason, we need to name our character. We're going to be naming our legendary character today, Barry the Bone Razor. He's so good at raising bones, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just look at his incredible eyes. Oh, they're so mystifying and beautiful. So Barry the Bone Razor is about to be born in to the fantastical world of Todd Howard's Skyrim. And let's go see how long it takes for him to destroy the game. Right, we've now actually got our first big decision. Do we go with the Imperials or the uh, the Northmen? Now, naturally, I'm going to side with the Empire because it makes perfect sense. Let's go. Oh, I have to do it to make Queenie proud. Right, now we're going to speed our way through. We've got some storm cloaks here, but don't worry. We can just kind of kill them rather easily. Um, in true Todd Howard fashion, they're not even moving or fighting back. Okay, nope, now they're moving and fighting back. Oh, this is Skyrim. It, it's truly beautiful. Oh my god, Hadvar. Oh, I want to resurrect you, my friend. You can raise my bone any day of the week. Now, this is where you kind of get your first access to magic in the game. There's a dead wizardy person sat in this cage here, and you'll learn your first spell of sparks, which is fantastic. And if you search the mage, you can even grab some novice hoods and robes. Oh, nice. Oh, here we go. The next massive group of storm cloaks. Here we go. 
which we can now just do zappy zappy magic on and then let the torch resistant finish off and i'm just going to run past the bear because there's actually no need to fight the bear in the tutorial and that is basically the entire first act done and now we can take our still level one character and turn them into the most powerful being in the universe right hadvar what a fantastical journey we've just been on together now we're going to split up with each other and i'm going to have to say goodbye to him and make my way over to not riverwood which is where you'd normally end up but instead make it almost all the way over to white run although actually i'm going even further than white run i'm going beyond white run now in order to make this journey easier i strongly recommend you simply throw yourself into the river and just get carried by its currents all the way down towards white run and then simply once you've made your way over climb up the embankment and oh look there's even a wolf for us to fight sorry wolfy boy look at barry bone razor go my goodness now you're going to want to continue on around past white run whilst white run and riverwood are generally the two places level one players will find themselves ending up this is the much much better location what on earth is this just a random dead bandit okay and and a horse is this a, f a legitimate free horse? It is, isn't it? Okay, right, well, we've got a free horse now. Now, just past White Run and up to our left here is a Stone of Power. These Stones of Power are very useful. I'm sure if you've played Skyrim, you've probably run into several of them. They'll do basic things like, say, increase your resistance to magic, maybe increase your experience gain in, say, one-handed or two-handed weapons. But this stone is very different. Now, up at the top of this stone, we should run into, hopefully, a necromancer doing necromancy things. Yep. Come on, you raise up those skellies. And now what we're going to do is we're going to simply fight the necromancer, which is surprisingly easy, and then his one skelly friend who's immediately gone and died. Now you see, we've killed this skeever which has chased us, and this skeleton, and this necromancer here. But why on earth have we done it? Was it to simply steal from this necromancer? Was it to simply observe this random looking stone? Was it perchance to destroy this game's very balance? Well, it's to do the latter, because this is the ritual stone, ladies and gentlemen, which is a random stone in the middle of nowhere which anyone can access at any stage in the game, I'd like to point out, and it grants quite possibly the most powerful spell. This grants you the ritual ability, which can be used once per day to reanimate nearby corpses to fight for you. Now, naturally, it's a stone, so you can only have one of these bad boys at a time, so you're going to have to sadly give up your increase in experience, but it matters little when you've just gained control of quite possibly the most powerful stone in the game. Now unlike most other raised dead spells where you can say bring a corpse of a fallen enemy back to life to serve you, this isn't limited by stupid game balance and design constraints. You see normally resurrecting dead bodies only works up to a certain level, I think it's around about level 40, but beyond that enemies cannot be raised. This spell however is a bit of an exception because it raises undead up to level 75. It raises literally anything up to level 75, excluding horses. So that means you can resurrect giants and mammoths to fight for you from level 1. Provided you can actually find a dead one of them. Or kill it yourself, I don't know, it's up to you. Equally, unlike most undead spells, this spell does not actually add to your party limit, so you can have as many undead as you like. And it also raises all undead within a radius of 75 feet. Meaning I don't just have to manually click the necromancer to raise them as undead, I just simply stand in the middle of all three of these guys, hit the Z key and suddenly our skeleton friend is going to come back to life, so is our necromancer here and so is our tiny skeever companion. Now these are our three brand new companions who, as you can guess, are going to follow us around the world. Come on my friends! Now they are going to be a little bit undead and consequently slightly groggy, but they're our friends and they'll join us on all of our merry adventures. Now of course this spell has a couple of limitations, for example it only lasts technically about 200 seconds, but there's some very unique things you can do to get around this limitation. I mean, did you know you can also only use this spell once per day? Wow, that's a great balancing factor there, Todd Howard. I'm sure there's absolutely no way it can be cheesed. Oh, and what's this? The dead bandit we found on the road earlier. Lovely, he's just sat here. He'd be perfect to be resurrected. Okay, right, let's resurrect this bandit. So I hit the Z key. Oh no, this power can only be used once per day? Are you telling me we can't resurrect the bandit? Oh, we're gonna have to come back tomorrow to resurrect the bandit, but by then all of my followers will be dead. Well, it turns out there's an easy way to circumnavigate this ladies and gentlemen by just hitting the T key and fast forwarding time 24 hours. By doing this we bypass Todd Howard's limitation of only allowing us to do this spell once every day. Because as soon as we come back an entire day has passed and we can now do the spell again. Of course when we come back all of our companions are going to also be dead but don't worry. In previous necromancy spells the undead are very limited because once you've used them once they'll turn into a pile of ash and they can't be resurrected again. This of course is in 
entirely different because this spell is completely and utterly broken. And I can hit the Z key, and now we have our Skeever, a Bandit, a Skeleton, and a Novice Necromancer, all to assist in our fantastical journey. Right, my friends, come with me. And oh my goodness, what's this? A wolf that we murdered earlier. Oh, well, you know what this means. All right, let's get all of our friends together. Come on, everyone stand over here. Good stuff. And once again, we'll pass 24 hours. And there we go. 24 hours has passed. All of our undead friends have died. And what we can then do is simply resurrect them all back up again, including this brand new wolf friend of ours. And now our party is six people strong. All right, come on. All of you follow me. And as much as I'd love to continue to white run, instead we're going to go to Riverwood first because they've got a bunch of NPCs simply standing out in the open. But ladies and gentlemen, we haven't even gotten fully started yet. We are going to take this very small party and effectively a militia force and take it to silly levels. Now our little party is looking great, but we could really do with finding some isolated members of Riverwood and ganking them against a wall and turning them into the undead. So I'm hoping that, oh yep, here's a great opportunity, the fantastic Feindal over here, as well as Gadur. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to wait for Gadur to go away. And once she walks away, we can then kill Feindal. Right, now it's time for Operation Gank Feindal round the back of the log cutter and then turn him into being a necromanced archer. I reckon she is far enough away now. Perfect. All right, kill Feindal. Go, go, my friends, go. No one's noticed either. Perfect, there we go. So no one's noticed us murder this person. Oh, wait, no, they have. Okay, right, kill Gadur. Our skeleton has armed himself with an axe. Okay, it's looking good. I've got to be honest, I think we probably have this fight. But it doesn't hurt for me to join in with an axe. Oh, my goodness. That's the blow we were looking for. Now, that's the last witness killed, meaning our bounty has been removed. And all that's left is for us to simply resurrect all of our fallen comrades and the brand new Gadur and Archer to join our midst. So let's allow some time to pass. And there we go. All of our resurrected friends have flopped on the floor, so let's quickly revive them. Ah, oh, fantastic. Now Gerda is back. Oh, we've got our wolves. Steven Skeever's back. Even our bandit over here. And you can just see how stupidly far the radius is because we were standing here and we've managed to resurrect Feindal, who's standing right the way over here. Hello, Feindal. Now, Feindal does come with his fantastical bow, which is lovely. But look at our fantastical party now. Oh, it's brilliant. All right, let's move these guys into the main town. Come on, gang. We've got more people to recruit. Wow, I actually hardly see any guards out and about. The only person sat outside at the moment is goddamn Hilda here. Okay, fine. Right, we're gonna murder Hilda. Right, let's drop down a quick save. Sorry, Hilda. Right, go on. Wolves, go. This'll be nice and easy. And there we go. She's dealt with. Now we're going to simply allow some time to pass and then we're going to add a very, very elderly lady to our army. Some would say aggressively recruiting the elderly for an armed forces operation is a little bit immoral, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, because I am not limited by such difficult constraints such as actual morality. You've just come outside, Sven, and I'm afraid uh, Hilda here is dead on the floor. Such a shame indeed, Sven. Look at all these dead bodies. Who's going to clean them all up? Anyway, we're going to simply resurrect everyone, bring them back to life. Look, Sven. Look, she's come back. Isn't it wonderful? Your family. I should hear you play. Oh, you've been trained as a scout, Sven. Oh, that's so cute, Sven. Anyway, die, Sven. Right, kill Sven. Go. Okay, so all of my companions are coming here to join in. Hilda, are you are you helping out? No, Hilda's going to instead stand over here. Right, Hilda, I've got to be honest. Why didn't you help us murder your son? So there we go. Sven's dead. We're going to steal his key to his house. He's got a nice little ring there. I'll also rob off of him. And I'll take his gold. Why not? There we go. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is simply stand in the middle of all of these silly sausages and resurrect them all again. Now, naturally, they'll all flop down on the ground again. But don't worry, it's okay. We can just simply hit them with the good old classic revive action. And now our army is back up and running. Now, the most interesting thing about the massive army is that whenever you go into a shop, they effectively all come with you. So we've entered Lucan's shop here, and I can just hit him with an axe, and now all of my army, which is sat in a nice, confined, close-up space, can now start wailing away on them. Ah, perfect. There we go. And that's two new, fine additions added to our collection. Beautiful. Now, once again, I'm going to wait for some time to pass and resurrect all of our fun companions. And then, we're bam, we're going to raise them all up, and apparently, uh, apparently Lucan here doesn't remember us killing all of his friends and family, but okay, this is fine. 
Lucan, are you okay? You'll be happy to help her. Okay, Camilla's dead. Lucan, I've got to be honest, Lucan. What a mess. It's a full of dead bodies of people who I keep resurrecting and then murdering. I mean, they're technically brilliant because I can harvest them for resources. Like Hilda, who keeps respawning keys and cheese. It is actually silly the amount of items you could duplicate. Right, now that I've let some time pass again, I'm going to hit the resurrect and bring everyone back. Ah, oh, fantastic. Look at this incredible formation we have going. Anyway, sadly, as Lucan is an essential NPC, we can't completely murder him. But for some reason, we can kill his sister and then exit, and he's not going to ask any questions. Oh, did I accidentally leave all of my wolves outside? Oh dear, I did, didn't I? Oh, they're not looking too great. I suppose wolves and skeevers can't actually follow us indoors, but skeletons can. And there we go. We've once again passed some time so that I can resurrect all of these wolves and all of these people. And now our army is back up to full force. Lovely stuff. All right, come on, friends. Let's go get some guards. Now, I've spoken to Barry, and apparently he's got a very fantastic limited time offer for all of you, the lovely ladies and gentlemen watching. Apparently, the first 6,000 people who like this video will be visited by the legendary Barry Bone Razor and have their very bones raised. I know. I mean, he is surprisingly handsome. Now, you might also be wondering why on earth we go into towards Whiterun. We've got a bunch of guards we can pick up, but most importantly, to all of you who've played Skyrim before will remember that the companions are currently fighting a giant out in the farm, just outside of Whiterun. Now, all that we need to do is walk over to said giant, watch the companions defeat it, and then resurrect its corpse. Upon doing so, we've just gained a massive high-level giant to join our army. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking that, come on, Spiff, this is a very slow way of progressing through the game, it would be much, much easier if you could instead resurrect all of these people over and over again, instantaneously, without having to wait 24 hours, because you're not actually able to wait 24 hours when you're in a fight. No, you see, when you're actually in combat, you can't skip time, meaning we need to find a new way of circumnavigating that, should we ever need to resurrect people in the middle of a battle. Anyway, it doesn't matter much because we've just added some more companions, there we go, and our party has gained free people. Right, come on my minions, we've got a giant to summon. Now the only thing we need to look out for in this entire engagement is a white ring guard. Provided we don't get spotted by one of those bad boys, we are in the money. I'll drop down a save here and we're just going to run our way over to the giant, make sure as many of our companions are here as possible, and let's fast forward 24 hours. Now a white ring guard is probably on his way and we wouldn't be able to do this fast travel if he was trying to actually attack us, so we've got to get this done before the white ring guard arrives. And I'm hoping that by standing in this spot I can resurrect the giant as well as the vast majority of my loyal followers. So there we go, I'll hit them with that, the white run guard is on his way so I'm gonna hit the Z key and now my massive giant friend, come on up my friend, white run guard is now here, he likes to try and fight us but luckily we now have a giant to assist us and as you can guess giant, quite useful in terms of combat so we're just going to surround this white run guard and gank him. Ah, oh, it's as easy as that. Right now luckily our party's looking quite good I have noticed that effectively all of our animal companions died in that engagement, so I'm going to allow some time to pass and resurrect all of them, as well as our brand new White Run Guard. Now, if you're wondering why on earth this is so powerful, well, just take a look at the Conjuration Tree in Skyrim. It's got a couple of bonuses, like, for example, you can summon undead twice as far away, which is great, I guess. You can have your undead last for a little bit longer. You can give them all an extra 100 hit points of health, which is very useful. But most importantly, if you want to have two reanimated zombies, well, that's actually going to be a exceedingly high level spell for you, requiring 100 points in Conjuration. This is an ability we not only have, but have more of at level 1. Anyway, let's pass some time. And there we go, I've passed some time and all of my friends have died. I'm going to quickly hit the Resurrect once more, summon our brand new White Run Guards and all of our existing previous companions, and I'm going to take them on a little bit of a walk to get one of the greatest unique items this game has. Come with me, my friends, including the massive bloody giant. So if you want to learn how to cast the completely broken Raise Undead spell as many times as you want, then all you need to pull it off is a very simple, easy quest, which was added into the game via DLC and created by the magical underground dwarves, well, before they all died. Now, I don't have the exact spot of actually where we roughly need to go, but there's a place around here called the Arken Gafams. Look, I've nailed the pronunciation of it, don't worry. Now, this location is a very unique and special dwarven ruin, which provides a stupid 
stupidly overpowered unique item. Now we are going to have to effectively cross the entire world getting to this place but don't worry it's all going to be worth it. Now we do technically have a giant in our party but it is going to definitely slow us down and I'm going to have to definitely revive all these individuals multiple times on our journey so sadly the giant just is going to have to be left. But don't worry his corpse will probably remain for us to pick up later on. Oh but speaking of people that we can use uh look at this. This is a prisoner convoy also known as a perfect opportunity for me to test my magic and free an individual. So good luck imperial soldiers. This is an extra four individuals to add to the mix. Oh and you're handcuffed but honestly that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh there we go. Look at that. All of those people lovingly added to the fray. And there we go after waiting another 24 hours I can bring back all of these lovely individuals. So that's three imperial soldiers added to my army as well as a stormcloak soldier which as you can guess are decently high leveled enough or basically be able to hold their own in combat. Not that they even really have to do that because there's a huge amount of people to stand behind them and assist them. Oh god it's a mud crab. I don't think combined we can defeat that mud crab. Oh just look at the massive group following us wherever we go. They are just amazing. Look at that. How many people do we even have? Let's do a head count right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. We have seventeen resurrected individuals. All of whom will fight for us and die for us and then resurrected for us to then fight and die again and then resurrected and then they can fight and die again and you get the gist. There is no end to them. You physically can't even kill them because unlike other undeads these guys just come back to life. Now where do we need to go next? We're in a lovely part of the map of course. There's a beautiful temple system over there but instead we're trying to find some dwarven ruins. And I'm pretty sure that's going to require us crossing this river and climbing up the entirety of that hill. Oh but actually what's that? Do I see a human being down there? A walking imperial soldier? Oh perfect. All right come on bring all of the men down. Oh there's three imperial soldiers over here. Oh let's add three imperial soldiers to the mix. Go on men come on bring yourself over here. Oh my goodness you can't you can't escape. You can't escape. Right time to fast forward some time and bring all of my dudes back. Now the biggest annoying factor and limiting part of this exploit is the fact that you can only do it once a day. The whilst sure we're able to bypass an entire day using the wait ability we do have to group all of our people up again if we want to start summoning them again. Hence why sadly we have to lose some people like say a novice necromancer because we're not able to continuously cast the revive spell because every time we cast the revive spell we first have to kill all of our existing revived creations and anyway, I'm going to now try and cross this river and hopefully all of my minions will follow me. Come on minions get into the water now just up there I'm pretty sure is where we need to go. I can see that lovely little icon on the map meaning that there is some kind of magical tower and I'm gonna guess that that's the one we're looking for. Now here's a handy dandy trick if you want to get all of your companions over to you in one easy move simply hop inside any building and hopefully all humanoids should follow you. Oh yes here's all of our available companions. There we go by hopping in and out we've respawned all of our current living companions and brought them to our location. With these four people we should be able to actually easily clear through the dungeon. Alright there we go I can see the map icon. The place we're aiming for is just straight ahead and then once inside I just need to complete a very easy quest of just walking through and clearing out a dungeon and a couple of classic Todd Howard specials also known as very basic easy puzzles and then I'll be able to show you the final most definitive feature of Skyrim Necromancy. Oh and we've just ran into some bandits. <gasps> a bandit chief. Oh right well if these guys know magic that'll be fun. I could do with a bandit that knows magic. Oh, Oh, and a vampire fledgling. My goodness. <laughs> what is going on here, Todd? Todd, what's going on? Why is the dead Argoni wagging its tail? What is this little guy doing? What have you done to him? He's so happy, but he's dead. Oh my goodness, you can move the body and it just keeps on going. What is up with this tail, Mr. Argonian? Okay, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It, it really is. Wow, he's such a good boy. Now we finally made it all the way to our fantastical dwarven objective. You'll find it just south of Markov here. Inside awaits us a fantastical dungeon with lots of fighting of Falmer and that's generally about it. Now naturally I want to try and get my companions in there so I'm going to skip time and re-resurrect them. Not all of them could make it though because I decided it was survival of the fittest and I also wanted to get here as fast as humanly possible. Because once we have the artifact we've basically completed the entirety of Skyrim and from this point on we no longer need to do any fighting for our 
ourselves. Right, grab your weapons. Let's go see what Arkan Farms has for us. Now you might be wondering why I've got a level up saved and I haven't used it. Well, two reasons. One, it provides me with a huge amount of health. And secondly, it also makes this exploit look even more powerful. Now, whilst we walk through here, we're going to be hit by a bunch of voices telling us to turn back. We're going to ignore all of them. Oh, turn back before it's too late. Nice. Try ghostly voice. But I know that there's a very powerful item at the end of this. Hello, Catria. Now, we're going to ask Catria for her assistance because, you know, we might as well. She's effectively an immortal, unkillable NPC who will wander with us through this fantastical adventure land with our lovely companions in tow. Now, there's going to be lots of complicated fights going on here, but luckily we don't need to do much of them. We can rely on our fantastical companions for that. Yeah, look at them go. They deal with these dwarf spiders like a knife carving through butter. It's truly majestic. Now, what is the unique item at the end of here? Well, technically there are three potential items at the end of this dungeon. You get to use the Aphium Forge or whatever to craft one magical Aphium item. I'm pretty sure there's a staff, a sword, and a helmet. And in our case, we're going to go for the helmet slash crown, because it is by far the most powerful item. Luckily, our companions can actually path through here because the dungeon was designed so that Katri could join you. Anyway, through here we must go. All right, now we've got some farmer up ahead here, which will be fine, don't worry. Farmer are actually surprisingly easy. Now, not for us, of course, because they do a huge amount of damage, but luckily, we don't have to actually fight them. Instead, I'm going to equip my lovely shield and a handy little sword and sit back in the corner and let my friends deal with it all. Ah, there we go. Sizzle away, my farmer friends. Well, two of my companions got stuck in the last zone and so couldn't follow us, but we don't need them anymore because we've just murdered two farmer. And do you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means bringing those two Falmer back to life to murder all the other Falmer with us. You see, this level 1 spell effectively allows you to do any dungeon whatsoever because all dungeons in Skyrim are effectively the same. You enter, fight a bunch of mini enemies, and then build your way up to a big boss, which will probably have you fight waves of small enemies, and then finally the big boss. This structure allows you to abuse the resurrection abilities because you can just bring all of the mini enemies back to life to assist you. So we now have two Falmer. Perfect. Alright, now we have to continue along our journey across this very unstable bridge. Now there's Falmer literally everywhere here, but don't worry, we'll be fine. And by that I mean we need to get away from here and let our minions do it. My god, luckily they've got all the ranged attack and melee attack that we're going to need to get through this dungeon. But still, I really wasn't built for combat. The Falmer friends, however, now they're perfect for combat. Just look at them go. Oh, I'm fantastic. That's all of them dealt with. So once again, we're going to let some time pass and bring them all back. Right, now we can't get through there, so we're going to have to go this way across this very rickety looking bridge. All right, come on, my friends. Oh, we've got the whole gang together here. Come on, guys. This is perfect. Right, I'm guessing, yep, more Falmer in here. Lovely. All right, I've once again added even more people to our army. We've gained another Falmer and another Chorus here, or Chariots, I don't know what they're called. In order to do an upcoming puzzle, we're going to need a bow. But the game's aware of the fact that the player might not have a bow, and so they choose to leave one here. There we go. And it's not just any bow, this is Zephyr. A stupidly special bow, because it fires 30% faster than a standard bow. Which, as you can guess, makes it very useful. Now, there's a little bit of a challenge here. You see, you have to solve this puzzle by hitting these things with a bow. Now, this puzzle's actually surprisingly easy. You go one two and then this one is three and this one's four and then finally we get to number five perfect we did it Ah, oh, lovely. Now we get to claim the treasure. Oh my goodness. Now this is it, ladies and gentlemen. We have the shard here, and then all we need to do is make our way over to the actual forge. Now, most importantly, this room is just filled with a bunch of high-level loot, which is perfect. And we're going to take all of this so that we can mostly sell it later. And now, finally, we're going to take the Ethereum shard. Now, once you have this first piece, it's up to you to basically get the rest. You're going to have to go across Skyrim following the journal to get all four other pieces. Naturally, this is going to take a little bit of time, but don't worry, it's entirely possible to very easily do it at level 1, especially using our fantastical party of goons. A few moments later. Now we've gone and collected all of the shards, we also decided to dive down into the dwarven ruins of Befout over here, which is relatively easy. Once you get to the final forge though, you get asked to craft one of three items. You either get to make a staff, which can summon a dwarven spider, which will fight for you for 60 seconds, or you can get a shield, which makes things ethereal for a few seconds, or most importantly, you can 
can get this. The Ethereal Crown. This bad boy will always give you an armor rating of zero and it's technically not actually worth that much, but trust me, this is the most powerful item you will probably naturally find in the game for one very important reason. Whilst you wear it, it retains the last standing stone ability you currently held, granting you its effect in addition to the current stone that you have. Now, once you have your swanky crown in your inventory, you are then going to want to equip it and bind the ritual stone's powers to it by simply having it on your head. Then we need to pick up a second set of stone's powers. In our case, we're going to go to the guardian stones just because of how easy to access they are. It doesn't matter what other bonus you go for because the only one that matters is the ritual stone. You can have whatever bonus you like, ladies and gentlemen, and you can even change this bonus around. All that matters is that we've gone to the ritual stone first to lock it into this helmet. Right, now to activate another stone. We're going to go for the warrior stone. So we're going to accept this and this is going to remove the ritual stone from us, but you'll notice the ritual stone has just been added back in. That's because the ritual stone has now become bound to this crown. This is an interesting little situation to say the least because if we bind the ethereal crown to our favorites and switch back and forth between this novice hood and the crown, you'll notice that the ritual stone is removed and then immediately added back onto us. Now, I can't believe that no one tested this, but for some reason, when you have daily limited modifiers and take this hat on and off, well, guess what? It breaks the game. Oh, hello there, bandit. Now, you might be thinking, how on earth can it break the game? Well, when it comes to simply bringing a dead body back to life, like say this bandit that we just killed here, we can use the ritual stone and for once a day, we can resurrect the dead. This gets a little bit more complicated because remember the game limits it to once a day, but if we quick switch out of the ethereal crown to the novice hood and then put it back on and then reselect the ritual stone again, we can then cast the spell again. But remember the power can only be used once a day, but that's fine. We take off the hood, put on the crown, equip the stone and we bam it can go again. And it's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. You can cast this spell as many times as you like. You can cast it in combat. You no longer have to wait 24 hours to get this spell done again. That is the true power of this exploit. A massive army that can never die and can immediately be resummoned as and when you like. You can then stack on a bunch of necromancy buffs and make this bad boy last and feel even more powerful. Now I fast traveled to the farm over here because I'm hoping that I can run into a couple of NPCs to murder. Now the thing is once we kill our first NPC it's effectively game over for everyone else. And actually I wonder can we start with the chickens? Can a chicken be resurrected? Oh my god the chickens can be brought back to life. Chicken will you fight for me my friend? You're next by the way chicken. I'm sorry. Right we're off to a great start. We've uh, doubled our quantity of chickens. We're now up to two. Right, come on chickens. I've got people for you to aggressively peck. Oh no this is perfect. A little watchtower for us. Oh my goodness who's this? Oh no for you. Bounty collector a bounty collector and a white run guard all at the same time jeez guys come on be a little slow about it one at a time please i've got a limited supply of chickens to work with all right now i'm going to summon back the bounty collector which just tried to murder us and hopefully using his support we're going to be able to kill the remainders of the guards here come on i believe in you bounty collector oh no they killed our bounty collector oh well that means we're dead right well no it doesn't because it just means we put the hood back on again and bring our bounty collector back to life he can solo this entire thing or just take a while. Oh, Beansy died again. I really should bring more support than just chickens next time. All right, I've chugged the remainder of my health potions. Come on, Bounty Collector, you can do it. Kill a couple of these guards. All you've got to do. Come on, Bounty Collector, don't fail me now. You've done such a great job on the other ones. Well, actually, now that we have the other ones going, they can hopefully support you. Yep, they can. Right, that's one more guard. So we'll add that guard to the group. Come on, my friend. And that just leaves one final white run guard. Right, and now that we have our four guards, logically, could we take on, say, I don't know, a mammoth. We're going to need some assistance on our side, which is luckily where this massive fort comes into play. It's got a bunch of hopefully low-level bandits loitering around here, which we can use as cannon fodder to try and clear up some mammoths. So here we go, it's Fort Greymore, and all we need to do is just walk our way through here and fight a couple of bandits, which shouldn't be too much of a challenge. There we go, that's our first one killed, and as soon as we kill that second one there, I'm going to hit our first revive, and that's two bandits added to our side. Now these bandits technically aren't very good, but they'll do. Just a bit of extra cannon fodder can really slow down a giant. So we'll hit all of them with the classic good old revive, and we're not going to wander our way over to the next bandit camp. Oh, here comes the procession, just look at them. Oh, I'm perfect, we've 
encountered our bandits here. Now there should be around about, I don't know, maybe four bandits standing around outside here, which is perfect, because a few extra bandits and heck, even a mud crab will be a fine addition to our group. I've drawn mud crabs are bloody scary. There we go, we've got a brand new pet mud crab joining us, and we've got a, some kind of magic bandit here. He'll be quite easy, lovely. And you know what, we'll bring him and that wolf back. Come on, mud crab, you're doing great. Oh, yes. All right, come on. We've got two more bandits to kill. Uh, wait, no, we've got three. Perfect. I'll just kind of stand back a bit and let all of you guys do the fighting. And there we go. I'm pretty sure we've managed to kill everyone and we're going to be able to resurrect them all at the same time as well. Well, bam, let's bring everyone back and then we're going to take them over and we're going to try and fight those giants because, you know, we can now. We've got a whole bunch of bandits, including a couple of mages, so I think we do stand a minor chance here. Now, some of you may die, but that's honestly a sacrifice I'm more than willing to take. Ah, oh, perfect. What do we go for? Do we go for those mammoths there? No, we go for the one glitched mammoth here. This will be the start of our fight. Right, perfect. There we go. Fight with mammoth has begun. Go, my friends, go. Unleash a volley. Wow, okay, yep. The mammoth is doing a lot of damage, but once we get our first mammoth down, that's when the money's going to start coming in. We're going to hit them with our first revive here. Trust me, it's going to be necessary. And that is almost a mammoth down. There we go. That's one mammoth down. And with that, we're going to need to resurrect everyone. Come back, mammoth. Yes, there we go. The mammoth is on our side. Perfect. Right, now let's get a giant. Now, these are special giants. They aren't like the one which you find in the starting area. This is an actual proper high-level giant. Luckily for us, the mammoth can kind of tank the damage. Okay, no, it can't. It's just died. Mammoth, come back. I'm not having you die on me. This entire combat encounter is effectively me running around, luring a bunch of mammoths and giants around and then resurrecting all of my own men. But look at them. They're doing a splendid job. All right, we've almost done it. That's almost a second mammoth down. Oh my goodness, that's almost a dead giant, but it is chasing me. Come on, my friends. You've got this. Oh my goodness, you did it. That's almost a giant dead. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Yes. Oh, that's a giant we can add to our list. And with one giant down, that's effectively all the mammoths Almost now dead. We've got this. Come on. Look at that. <laughs> This game just is so stupid. We're resurrecting a, a giant to fight for us at like level three. Oh my God, we've just got two mammoths on our side now. Nope, that's all of them. That is all of them. Oh, we've done it. We've just cleared out the giant camp using only a bunch of crappy level 10 bandits or something. Oh, and in return, we've picked up two giants and three mammoths to fight for us. Oh, this is just perfect. Ah, and so here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Bone Razor and his legendary fantastic army of very low level bandits and mammoths. It is stupid the fact that you can do this from level one. It's not even that difficult. It's just do a couple of fetch quests and then use your stupidly overpowered abilities to cheese a bunch of boss fights. It's silly, it's cheesy and it's everything I love with Skyrim exploits. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here today then feel free to give the video a like and I'll leave our next video up to you. Would you like to see how to level up at stupid speeds in Skyrim or would you instead prefer to see the ultimate mage build which has absolutely zero counters whatsoever and will turn you into an immortal wizard lord. The choice is yours ladies and gentlemen. So hop down into the comments section and leave your vote. And hey if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today and you want to get more Skyrim flooding into your sub feed then do consider subscribing and heck you can even press that magical bell button which may or may not do something depending on how YouTube feels. As always a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Genuinely without you I wouldn't be able to sit down for about four days and record a bunch of Skyrim. So thank you very much for giving me a very strange job. And as always, if you need more of Spiff in your life, then look no further than this video on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be exactly what you're looking for. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.